Welcome to our Focus Forum. I think we're going to call it the magic of Motson because the man himself is here, John Motson, alongside his long-time partner, Mark Lock well, football partner, we should say, Mark Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Dan. Sorry, <laughs> we'll move on from that. Uh, Motty, um, 40 years in the game, your first commentary, 1971. Uh, take us back to, to the very beginning of it all. Uh, yes, well, I was in BBC Radio for three years, uh, from 68 to 71, doing all sorts of different jobs, and then started commentating on the radio, and then I got a year's trial um, with Match of the Day, um, and it started on the 9th of October 1971 with a forgettable match at Liverpool, which was a nil-nil draw with Chelsea, and the commentary was even more forgettable. And um, from a pretty uncertain start, I stumbled along from there. And in terms of look, looking back now, did, did you think then that you'd, you'd ever be involved in it for the no, best part of four decades? I think I'd have settled for that if someone had said you're going to be doing it in tw ten years, never mm. mind 40. A, so, year's, a year's trial, is that what they gave you? Yeah, really? I was on, uh, and uh, really, it was funny because I wasn't doing that well and then that Hereford-Newcastle yeah, ga that. game... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Hereford game came along, of course, oh. you know, Ronnie Radford and all that, and, and I got... That match got elevated to the top of the show at a time when I should have been right down at the bottom, really. Do you genuinely think that if that goal hadn't been scored, that yeah. game hadn't happened, you wouldn't be sitting here now? Uh, no, if Ronnie Radford's shot had hit the bar and come out, I wouldn't be sitting here now. That's why whenever I see it, I, I see it again, I just pray mm. that it doesn't, the goalie doesn't save it or something. Yeah. But it's like football, they just need a break, don't you? Mm. It's, it's the yeah. same kind of thing, isn't it? Was it was a big break for a break. Me. There are so many commentators around these days, uh, Motti, but I, I, I mean, you're the best known of the lot. I was just wondering, Laura, from a player's perspective, when did, when did he come on your radar? When did you sort of well, there realise were, there who was, he was and what he was doing? Well, there was John and there was Barry Davis, I mm -hmm. suppose, and, and Brian Moore would, would, would be the one. I mean, Brian Moore was a great commentator Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah. He's such a nice bloke to boot as well. But I think they would be the three when, when, when I was playing. Because don't forget then, there, there weren't that many games covered. It's, it's not like today where it's complete, every, you know, every single game, every single minute, and mm -hmm. could get away with stuff. Then, well, I think the he's made the point there, Laura, that the, the three of us got quite well known because we were the, we, well we weren't the only three there were some other the main three people doing it in yeah. regions but if you look around now or you listen to every match or watched every game that goes out live on british television in a given week now you'd be talking more about 30 or 40 yeah. voices mm. So, yeah, there's, it's, it's expanded enormously. And also people who... who some commentators who broke like, the world feed and, and things like that, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I have to say, sometimes, you listen to people and I go, who's that? You know, only because there's so many. And, when, and when some it was of the John voices and, are very similar as well, Yeah, they, they are yeah. very, very similar. And, but when, when, you know, John and, and Barry and Brian Moore, you just knew who they were. Uh, loads of questions coming in for you, Motti. On oh. your, I know you did, you did Twitter at the World Cup, but you've ret re retired from Twitter. But lots of people <laughs> asking about your, your highlight, your favourite moment. Can you pick a few for us, something that stands out? Well, we're in Manchester now, aren't we? And um, certainly the David Beckham free kick uh, for England against Greece was a, was a real iconic 2001, moment 2001, wasn't it? That, that yeah. was, yeah. And then uh, just before that, we'd had the 5-1 win in Germany mm -hmm. when Mart M M Michael Owen got his hat-trick. Um, which also was a, a, a well, of all the England games I've covered, that probably is the most memorable, along with the semi final in, in Turin when we nearly got to the World Cup final and lost on, on penalties. Um, to be honest, there's been some fantastic. I mean, I've been with him to countless World Cups and European Championships. Um, one, of the, one of the highlights of that was when we were about to do the final of the Euro 2000 between France and Italy. And, <laughs> I all, know what's coming. I, I think had Laura my, remembers had my, it. Yeah. Had my notes beautifully prepared, you know, and suddenly a bottle of <laughs> bottle of water from this direction came and covered the whole sheet. So keep, keep your notes there, because can we can we pick up yeah, Motti's notes? Get, get the notes out, Motti. No, I'm, I'm leaving those there because those are that. Oh, they're the secret superstition, notes. Superstition, Mark. Superstition. I never uh, show them before a game. It's fair to say, oh, though. Okay, Dan, we can't show you the when, notes. When I, when I knocked <laughs> the water over, it was just all. It was like a blancmange at the end, and I got the look. <laughs> Interesting that that's on, it's on card and not paper. Do you get your card specially supplied? Do you know or? what? I'm going to collect a hundred new ones next <laughs> are week. You really? Yes, I am. The card and the sheepskin coat are the two main uh, requirements. But the great auction items, aren't they? Oh, it's, made some money. It's funny at the end of games when, when obviously the, the information's more or less no longer relevant because the game's been played. A lot of people say to me, "Can I have your board?" And, and, and quite often at auctions and charities, we've raised a fair amount of money. 
uh, with those. And uh, loads of questions about the coat as well. How many coats have you been through? Well, I don't know how many it is, but it seems like nine or ten. And I have got a brand new one in the wardrobe, ready to make its debut in November. Really? Yes, I have. A freshie? A freshie. <laughs> So I'm just deciding which... And did you come up with the idea for the coat or did I somebody the, give you a coat? I think the coat came up with the idea for me. <laughs> I, I think the British winter might have come up with the it, idea it for was, the coat. It was, it was. It was a day at Wickham um, where I was sent to do an FA Cup tie in December and the guy, I was standing on the pitch waiting to um, interview Martin O'Neill. Yeah, the famous blizzard. And the blizzard came yeah. down and a, um, a, a fellow called Stuart Clark, who was taking pictures of unusual scenes at football grounds, he got behind the actual BBC camera and took this picture of me looking a very dilapidated figure in the coat and the snow and the little cap on. And he made it into a postcard and, and that's where that all came from. I, I hadn't... The, the coat had never been really mentioned till then, so that's, what, 20 years ago. I that's great. We've done great moments and, and the coat. What about great characters? Who's, who stood out over the 40 years? Well, you see, when I started, um, it was Bill Shankly, Don Revy, Brian Clough, Jock Steen. I'm, I'm a, I was the person who had to interview Alf Ramsey the night England got knocked out the World Cup. Um, all of those characters who were just be beginning to bring the managerial personality cult, weren't they, then? It, it came in with that br br breed, didn't it, yeah. really? Yeah, certainly Shanks and those people, weren't they? Cause, mm. I mean, and the thing was about them, the quotes were fantastic, weren't they? You always yeah. gave you a line, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, there was one where um, I d inter interviewed Shankly at uh, Anfield because, you know, Tom Finney was Bill Shankly's uh, great yeah. idol. Yeah. yeah, he had play him in his overcoat, he used to say, and things <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. And on this particular day, George Best came and United beat Liverpool 3-1 and uh, Best got a hat-trick, so Shanks came out. There weren't, there weren't these lovely press conference theatres then. He would just come out with his hands in his pockets and stand in the corridor, you see. And one of the, one of the journalists said to him, Bill, after the way George Best played here today, you must think now he's almost as good, if not as good, as Tom Finney. And Shanky looked at the reporter and he said, aye, aye, but then Tom Finney's 65. <laughs> 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 but but, but it, it's, it's changed a lot. That, what I would say is the game has got better, there's no doubt about that, but it's also got much more organised and everything is kind of structured and you don't meet the players no. quite as often as you used to. You could wander down the corridor, couldn't you, when yeah. I first commentated on games of yours? Um, and, you know, I mean, meet the players, talk to the managers before they go. Now, it's very much a case of there's a... There's a, an appointed press conference, an appointed time for a television interview, and then that's all you see of them. So it, it isn't quite as... Um, informal as it used to be, is what I would say. And players used to... Did you used to enjoy that, the fact that you could mix well, with the likes of... Well, yeah, but the other thing about that was this, if, if John, Barry and, and Brian Moore turned up, it was a big match. It was literally a big match, so there's, there was always that edge to it. And, of course, then you thought, Crack, you better wash my hair on telly. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Not swear, because you your, mother, today, your mother's never <laughs> ever seen you swear before, and then all of a sudden she's, like, lit-reading, thinking, is that my son? <laughs> <laughs> no. Question as well about, um, obviously, football has changed mm -hmm. with technology. Um, yeah. What about the life of a commentator? Can you remember, can you compare maybe 40 yeah. years ago in the commentary box to, well, to now? We, we're better off now techno with the technology because when, believe it or not, when I first joined BBC television, there was only one machine that could replay an incident, only one video disc, it used to be called. And that was used on a Saturday afternoon for racing because, obviously, they had to have uh, the machine to show whether a horse had won a, a live race by a tight head or whatever. So when a goal was scored in a foot... And don't forget, Barry and I were doing recorded matches. We, there was no live football to speak of then. When a goal was scored in one of the match of the day games, Barry and I had to try and recap it in words as the players ran back to the centre without the assistance of any pitchers because there was no machine to show it. And then hope that at seven o'clock in the evening when the match of the day studio inherited the slow motion uh, replay machine from, from Grandstand, that, that our words would fit, the, the, or rather the pictures would fit our words. Guess what, then? And it, it was pretty much, yeah, uh, you, had, you had a few uh, misgivings about what you'd said and whether it would look right on the screen. But now, you know, a goal scored and we're lucky enough to have three, four, mm -hmm. sometimes five replays from different angles. And the final one, there'll be lots of people watching this and they'll be saying, you know, I'd love to be a commentator, I'd love to follow in your footsteps. Um, you can encourage them by saying you, you actually used to work in a second-hand bookshop while you were looking for your, your job, this, your break. I don't know where you've got this from, but it's absolutely true. Um, I used to work at um, the Methodist Publishing House in City Road in a second-hand bookshop, writing to newspapers all over the country saying, can you give me... A... And when I get letters now, as I do all the time from people, 
people, how do we get into your business? So I tell a story that it's really more about persistence mm -hmm. and perseverance. You've just got to keep getting all those reject slips and keep writing. And eventually I was lucky I got a, an apprenticeship on a weekly newspaper in Hertfordshire called the Barnet Press. And that put me on the road to journalism. And then I went to work in Sheffield on a morning paper and got into local radio. And as I explained, then there BBC... You go from there. Yeah. Well, yeah. listen, it's been lovely to, to reminisce with you. We could talk for a lot longer. Hopefully it'll be 40 plus a few more years. Thank you. Lauro, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Like and, um, like yesterday's for a minute. Though. I know, yeah, we yeah. Went, went way back there, didn't we? We certainly did, absolutely, yes. Thank you very much, gentlemen.